Ingram began as the E.J. Adcock Pharmacy in Krugersdorp 120 years ago and was first listed on the JSC in 1950. It has divisions in prescription drugs, over-the-counter medications and hospital care products. It's currently the target of rival buyout groups. Adcock has a market cap of 12.2 billion rand, price to earnings ratio of 17 and a dividend yield of 2.4%. And Brian Joffe's going back in there, guns blazing, is he? Well, let's get to his bid in a moment, but let's just go back and preface the business. So as you said there, very good OTC brands that stands for over the counter, things like Myprodol and Panado and the likes. Uh, it's got a solid hospital care business that's, you know, drip bags and saline, whatchamacallits, and injectables and stuff. That's because of a relationship they had with a UK and US company called Baxter Pharmaceuticals. And then it's active in uh, manufacturing stuff, generics, and that sort of pharma as well. And big in the vitamin space. At some point, yes, that's right, because they bought into that nutraceuticals thing yes, by buying Neutraleader. Yes. At some point, though, this business was as big as Aspen. Aspen is now 10 times larger. So that tells you a story that they haven't exactly executed all that brilliantly in recent years. So that's why we've got uh, impatient shareholders who may be gunning for some corporate action on this front. Yes, because remember it was shoved back out onto the market by Tiger, its parent, which decided it didn't want to be in pharma. So it picked up all of Tiger's shareholdings in the process of unbundling. So not a very you know, loyal or dedicated shareholder group, perhaps, and a business which is not doing all that well. They had a few strategic missteps in terms of getting the AIDS drugs quota. The and supply also issue, they tried to take over exactly, supply, they sort of messed around with the, the Indians. Press, et so, you know, swooping into the scene is, first of all, uh, Brian Joffe, who made an interesting bid out of the blue. Secondly, a private equity group, Actus. Yes. And then the Chileans. The CFR. The, yes. So Chilean the Weinstein family in Chile owns this company called uh, CFR, which does similar sort of stuff, wants to buy them but they're getting some pushback from the PIC and all the rest of it. Now, the CFR CEO was on CNBC just a couple of days ago. Exactly. He was chatting to the media in general. Trying to get, and you know. And saying if he doesn't <laughs> get the support from the government, he's walking away. It's a 13 billion rand deal. You see, I think the problem with South Africans is that they think that only things that happen here are any good. So when some foreigner comes in on his horse saying he wants to buy the business and give them Chilean listed paper for it, they're like, oh, what's that? Which I think is a bit petty and a bit small minded. Having said that, you know, the PIC, I suppose, prefers businesses that are run by South Africans in South Africa for the benefit of its pension holders. All right, now I want to come back to Brian Joffe because you said we were going to get there. And yes. what is going to happen? Because I don't know. I was going to ask you what's going to happen. I don't know. You're I the one know. who gets the messages from Brian Joffe. <laughs> he was watching the show last <laughs> night, by the way. So hopefully he's watching this evening and we'll get a call from him. But what's in he going to do? Future. So the share price is much higher because roundabout here is when all this deal talk happens and it shoots up to the sort of 70 rand level. So the question is, if the Chileans are going to get irritated and leave, and if the private equity bid is sort of a bit wishy-washy and conditional, and if Bidvest doesn't want to write a big check, is the share price going to go back down to 50 rand a share? There's one thing that I know, hmm. and I think that you should follow this as well, and that <laughs> is that you don't underestimate Brian Joffe. Under any circumstances. Well, it's true. That is absolutely correct. Although it's not quite clear why Mr. Joffe wants this business. Because his more normal methodology we, we is don't logistics need to and shipping with all and that. That's you know, noise. that kind of stuff. This is a manufacturing business. And from what I hear, not a particularly well-run manufacturing business either. People who build factories and plants for these guys say that you deliver a new one for them and you go back a year ago and there's you know, a mess all over the place. Well, you know, Mr. Joffe again goes in, Mr. Fix Up, mm. Fix It Up, etc., etc. Well, if the private equity guys, actors, take over, you know what those people do. Then they go in with a hatchet and there'll and be a very severe focus on cost. Really costs. strip the entire business. But anyway, we're getting well, a little bit yes, lost. Yes, we are. In Why are we so lost on the Adcock Ingram <laughs> The basic story. underlying business here is actually very good. It's got a very solid bunch of brands. It's got great margins. One thing you can say about pharma companies, excellent margins. You manufacture for five, you sell for a hundred. That's well, the that's, nature of this that's business. the business that you want. Exactly. So are we going to hot or not on Adcock? Look, we owned this one in our hot stocks portfolio a while back because we thought the rival bids could produce a little bit well of a pop. And it didn't go well for us. No, no, it did. it did. We got one of those modest little upticks from 68 to 71. But I decided, look, oh, well, that's ridiculous. This is like 68 to 71, nothing to write home about. I don't about. want to be greedy here. Again's again, and we just booked it and we're out of it. So we're not in it currently. I don't know. My sense is... There are risks here. You mean you know, there are risks. At 70, what did you say, 72, 73? We were in at 68 out of 71 or something like that. So we were really just playing around in that last little sort of bouncy bit. So now not hot or hot? 
I'm going to lean towards not hot. I just think the execution risks and the circumstances and the danger of it all falling through is not inconsiderable.